Instant Ralston and regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are on the planet Mars, searching for Carol in an underground storage room filled with ancient, musty books. Suddenly, a sound that's more than a sound presses down upon them. Commander, my head hurts. So does mine. I can hardly stand it. What's causing it, sir? Ultrasonic vibrations. Yeah, but where are they coming from? From the resonator up near the ceiling. The vibrations kill insects that attack the old documents. What'll it do to us? If we can't shut off that resonator, we'll meet the same fate as the insects. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Martian Masquerade! Time's up, Space Patrollers. This is the last call for the terrific Monoview Outer Space Helmet. Yes, this is the last week we can tell you how to get one. So, fire rockets! And get going, because I don't want any of you to miss out on the fun you can have with an outer space helmet. Now, just think, you can go off on imaginary trips anywhere in the universe through the eyes of that one-way eye plate. You can see everything clearly, but strange and different. A real spaceman's eye view. And with your helmet on, you'll look like an honest-to-goodness spaceman, too. It's a foot high. It slips over your head, rests on your shoulders, covers up your entire head. And that one-way eye plate is like magic. It lets you see out, but nobody, no, nobody can see in. Nobody can tell who you are. And what's more, it's got real-looking oxygen tanks, breathing tubes, and a crackling red and black lightning flash hood printed right on. Yes, sir, it's just what the spaceman ordered. Now, remember, this is the last time we can make this offer. So better swing into action right away. Buy a box of Good Hot Ralston. Then, with your name and address, and an instant or regular Ralston box top, send 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol... Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Martian Masquerade. In Commander Corey's central office at Space Patrol headquarters on the man-made planet Terra, Cadet Happy is attempting to explain a sudden change of plans to Carol Carlyle, daughter of the Secretary General of the United Planets. Well, that's about all I know, Carol, honest. But I don't understand. Well, oh, here's the commander. He'll explain it. I'll explain what? Hello, Carol. Good morning, Buzz. Uh, Hap's been trying to tell me that we aren't going to Jupiter. He's right. Oh, no. I've been trying to reach her all morning. Something came up at the last minute. Happy and I have to blast off for Venus right away. But why, Buzz? I'm to meet Captain Holcroft there and pick up some designs for a new secret weapon. Bring them both back to Terra. Oh, I see. Well, I guess I bought a lot of new things for nothing. No trip to Jupiter. Well, you'll make the trip all right. I've arranged passage for you in the Solar Queen. Happy and I will join you in a couple of days after we get Captain Holcroft safely back to Terra. Meanwhile, on Venus, in a shabby room at the Venus Plaza... Zyla Kermody sits dejectedly before a dressing table, gazing at her reflection in a mirror. As the door opens quickly behind her, she turns to greet her husband, Earl Kermody. Well, where have you been? Where have I been? Where did you hear it? I'm waiting. I've been waiting in this rat trap all day and without a thing to eat. All right, don't jump down my throat, Zyla. Give me a chance to tell you the news. Look, Earl, all the news I want from you is when do we get back to Mars? That's what I want to tell you. Look at these spaceship tickets. Oh, well... I won't even ask where you swiped them. Wait a minute. I didn't steal them. They were given to me by a fellow who wants a certain job done. Yeah? Yeah. And if we pull it off right, there's 20,000 credits in it for us. Maybe more. What kind of a job? All we got to do is go over to Venus City Space Hotel and remove some documents from one of the guests. Some plans of some kind for a secret weapon. They're in a plastic case uh, just like this one. Who's got the documents? Uh, Captain Howcroft. I got his number and everything. Captain Halcroft? Yeah, he's a space patrol courier. Well, are you out of your mind? That's all we need to get into a jam with a space patrol. Zyla, honey, let me finish. There's no danger at all. That is, if you help. I don't want any part of this. Wait a minute. Let me show you something. Yeah, look at this picture. Why, oh, it's one of my pic... Hey, it's not me. Don't you know who this is? It's Carol Carlyle, the secretary general's daughter. I always said you looked like her. <laughs> 
You really think so? Sure. A lot of people think so. Well, of course, she wears her hair different, but, but I could fix mine. Of course you could, honey. Now, look, all you got to do is get Captain Howcraft out of his room for a couple of minutes. Then I go in and get the documents. You mean I pass myself off as Carol Carlyle? You are crazy. I tell you, there's no risk at all. Well, how do I get into the Venus City Space Hotel in the first place? Sneak through the freight chute? No, no, no. Look, I've taken a room across the hall from Howcroft. As far as the hotel staff is concerned, you're Mrs. Donahue. Where'd you get the money for the room? From the same guy who gave me the spaceship tickets. Oh, who's that? Now, he's a guy working with our old pal, the Martian book dealer. Scavlin? Uh, well, Scavlin's just a go-between... But we're to take the documents to his shop in Lowell City on Mars. That's where we'll collect the 20,000 credits. 20,000? And all you have to do is play Carol Carlyle for ten minutes. Oh, you don't think this captain would leave his precious documents unguarded for anybody but the Secretary General's daughter, is that it? Hey, he might. But if we hold an ace, why not play it and be sure? Now, here's the way to work. Elsewhere, in a room on the 28th floor of the Venus City Space Hotel... Young Captain Hallcroft tries to read a technical journal, but his eyes keep wandering to the ray gun handy on the table beside him and to the drawer containing a case of valuable documents. Yes? I hate to disturb you, but I wonder if I could ask you a favor. Well, uh, what kind of favor? I seem to be locked out. The electrolock's stuck, I think. Oh, I see. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll phone down to the desk and have him send a man up. If the lock's jammed, you'll need an explanation. Oh, that's just what I was trying to avoid. It, it takes such a lot of explanation. You see, it's not my room. Some friends of mine, the Donahues, have the room across the hall. But they're out for the evening, and I left a package in there. Oh, I see. Oh, I know. It sounds strange. But calling downstairs and explaining it caused such a commotion. Oh, not on account of me, but because of my father. Your father? I see you don't know who I am. Does the name Carlyle mean anything to you? Carlyle? Your Car Your father's a secretary general. Of course, Miss Carlyle. I, I recognize you now from your pictures. Well, you can imagine what would happen if the hotel staff found out I was here. There'd be such a fuss. I was hoping I could just pick up my father's present from the room and leave quietly. Sure, I understand. Well, um, it's the room just across the hall, you say? Just one door down. I'd be so grateful. It'd only take a minute. Well, sure, Miss Carlyle. It'll be a pleasure. I... I do hope Mrs. Donahue gave me the right key. Luckily, I saw them in the hotel dining room. Well, if it was the right key, it should work. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it. There you are, Miss Carlyle. Oh, now, why did I have all that trouble? Oh, thank you so much, Captain. No, not at all. Well, if you excuse me, I'll Oh, have... just one more hmm? favor, if you don't mind. If you'll wait here just a minute, I'll give you the key, and you can leave it with the clerk later. I'll only be a minute. All right, all right Miss Carlyle. She said in the bureau drawer. Oh, now, isn't that provoking? Uh, Captain, I'm awfully sorry, but could you come in, please? Uh, well, what seems to be the matter? Oh, this drawer's stuck. I can't budge it. Would you try? All right, Miss Carlyle. A few moments later, Captain Halcroft returns to his room. His ray gun is still on the table, and a quick check shows the document case is still in the drawer. With a sigh of relief, the captain returns to his book. An hour later, there's another knock at the door. Captain Halcroft? Commander Corey, come in, sir. Thanks. Oh, Captain, this is Cadet Happy. How do you do? How do you do, Captain? Wasn't expecting you so soon, Commander. But believe me, I'm very glad you're here. Any trouble? No, sir. I'll take the plans, Captain. But you're still to follow your original orders, just as though you still had them. Yes, sir. Here's the case, Commander. I'll remove the plan so you can take the case with you. It's empty. Huh? Smoking rockets. I don't understand. That case hasn't been out of my sight since it was given to me. Have you left your room since you checked in here? No, Commander. I stayed here on guard ever since. Except a couple of minutes. Where did you go? Well, just across the hall, but I wasn't gone for more. Well, why did you go across the hall? Well, I, uh... I guess I'd better tell you the whole story. Miss Carlyle needed help getting into a room. Who was Miss Carlyle? Well, the Secretary General's daughter, Carol Carlyle. Captain. Carol Carlyle is on her way to Jupiter. But she looked exactly like her. Hair, eyes, everything. She's an imposter. You say she had a room right across the hall? She said it was a friend's room. Mrs. Uh, Donahue. I have the key. She left it with me. Happy, take the key. Check that room. Yes, sir. Come on, Captain. We'll go down and talk to the desk clerk. 
Fifteen minutes later, Buzz Happy and the very worried Captain Halcroft are in a surface car heading for the Venus City spaceport. Commander, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am. Well, all we can do now is find those crooks. Well, we're looking for three of them, a man and two women. Is that right, sir? No, no Happy, just a man and a woman. The woman who posed as Carol is also Mrs. Donahue. Well, how do you know that, sir? I showed a picture of the real Carol to the desk clerk. He said that if Mrs. Donahue arranged her hair differently, she'd look exactly like the picture of Carol. Oh, then she entered the hotel as Mrs. Donahue, went to the room, fixed her hair differently, and knocked on Captain Hellcraft's door, right? And I fell for it. You were fooled by an expert, Captain. She had all the props, even the gift package in the drawer. Yeah. And while you were opening the drawer, Mr. Donahue slipped into your room and got the documents. Well, the best bet is to try to leave Venus before the theft is discovered. If they don't show up at the spaceport, we'll start a search of the entire city. Oh, what are we standing around for? Why can't we get aboard the spaceship? I told you, Zyle, it's going to be late blasting off. There's nothing to worry about. Just relax. A few hours, we'll be at Scavelin's place in Lowell City. Shh, look, there's that Captain Halcroft, and he saw me. You're just imagining things. Calm down. I tell you, Earl, it was Halcroft. He was walking right behind us. Now what do we do? Don't get panicky. Wait till he gets farther away, then we'll duck into this freight. Sorry, Commander. She's here all right. Where? Standing over there by the freight section. Hey, I see her. Smoking rocket, she sure looks like Carol, all right. Uh oh, she ducked through a door. Come on, Hap, we'll follow them. Captain, you wait outside. Here's the door she ducked into, sir. Inside, quickly. Well, there doesn't seem to be anybody here. She must have gone through into another part of the freight office. Somebody's behind those crates over there. Come on. All right, lady, come on out. So? So I'm out. Hey, no wonder the captain was fooled. Well, what do you want? I haven't done anything. If you haven't, I'm sure you won't mind coming with That's us. That's where you're wrong, mister. Look out, Commander! <laughs> Wait! Wait, you... Oh, you really clobbered him. Come on, let's get out of here. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Gang, hurry, hurry, hurry. This is positively, absolutely, definitely the final week we can tell you about the terrific, the sensational, the wonderful Monobu Outer Space Helmet. So hurry, hurry, hurry. This is the last time we can offer the swell Monobu Outer Space Helmet and tell you about the swell times and the swell fun you can have with one. You know, it's the one and only Outer Space Helmet that keeps your identity a complete secret. Because that one-way eye plate lets you see out, but nobody else can see in. It's got special outer space ear plates, too. Everything you hear sounds like it's coming from way out in space. And don't you forget about those real-looking oxygen tanks, breathing tubes, and neat lightning flash hood printed on. So hurry, hurry, hurry. For only a quarter, 25 cents on a box top, you can get a Mono View Outer Space Helmet. Just buy a box of good hot Ralston. Then with your name and address and an instant or regular Ralston box top, send 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Martian Masquerade. Taking advantage of her striking resemblance to the Secretary General's daughter, Zyla Kermody helped her husband steal plans for a secret space patrol weapon from Captain Halcroft. A short time later, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy arrived at Venus City, discovered the theft, and rushed to the Venus City spaceport in time to catch Zyla. But while questioning her, Buzz and Happy were knocked out by Earl Kermody. Unaware of this latest development, Captain Halcroft waits for them to come out of the freight station. But as moments go by, he becomes worried and goes in to investigate and discovers Buzz and Happy lying on the floor. Commander, cadet. Uh, Commander, what happened? I'm not sure. There's a big guy with a club. First he hit you, Commander. Well, before I could get out of the way, he hit me. Same man I saw outside, talking to the girl. They may still be at the spaceport. We'll contact the control tower and order all ships grounded until we can make a search. Commander... If they got away, I think I know where they might be going. Where? Well, when I first spotted the girl here at the spaceport, I, I passed by close enough to hear part of their conversation. They mentioned Lowell City. Mars. Did you hear anything else, Captain? Well, it was a name. A rather odd one. Scavs. Scavs something or other. 
Uh, Scavlin, I think it was. We'll check on that later. Let's alert the control tower. All ships are grounded while a search is made for a girl resembling Carol Carlyle. Guards at all exits are questioned, but there is no trace of her. Then, following the clue offered by Captain Halcroft, Buzz and Happy board the Terra 5 and blast off for Mars. With Happy at the controls of the ship, Buzz finishes a call to Space Patrol Headquarters. Now that's all, but remember, when you locate Miss Carla, I'll ask her to call me immediately on my private frequency. Corey out. Any luck, Commander? Well, Captain Halcroft was right. What do you mean, sir? There is someone named Scavelin in Lowell City. Uriah Scavelin. He runs a bookstore. Bookstore? It doesn't sound very suspicious. No, in fact, it's quite innocent. So innocent that I wonder why people like our friends the Donna Hughes would be interested in it right after pulling a robbery. Yeah, that is strange. Well, has this Scavelin any kind of a record? No, but our Mars agents have been to his shop several times. You see, he specializes in rare books, first editions, collector's items. When such books are stolen, our men naturally contact all dealers, Scavelin among them. Well, have you tried having Major Robertson run a search through our master files on the, on the Donahues? Yes, but I doubt that anything will turn up. That woman's name is no more Donahue than it is Carlisle. Yeah, I guess it's right. However, if the phony Miss Carlisle or Mrs. Donahue visits Scavelin's, it'll be reported to Lowell City Headquarters. Carol Carlisle at Jupiter City Headquarters calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Carol Carlisle to Commander Corey. Corey here. Oh, I just got your message. When did you arrive at Jupiter City? There's a change in plans, Carol. Oh, Buzz, not again. Yes, and you're directly involved. Get the first passenger ship to Mars. I'll meet you at Lowell City Space Patrol Headquarters. Mars? But why are you going there? I'll explain when you arrive. Well, can't you tell me over the space phone? Definitely not. Corey out. Well, after that, I'll bet Carol will be there waiting for us. A tall man and a blonde girl stroll down a side street in Lowell City, capital of Mars. The man carries a package under his arm, a package that might conceivably be a book. They pause before a large store bearing a sign, Scavelin's Bookshop. Oh, wait. Come on, Zyla, what are you holding back for? I don't think we should go in there. How else are we going to collect? Come on. Here he comes. Let me do the talking. May I help you? I uh, brought in that rare document I mentioned the other day, Mr. Scavlin. Oh, let's see it. I'll unwrap it. Uh, It doesn't look like much to me, just a book. (laughs) Don't judge a book by its cover. Open it up. Hmm, this is a rare item. Well, then it's genuine. I'll drop back in a few days after I have a chance to examine it. Say, what about our money? Where's the 20,000 credits? Oh, you don't understand. I haven't the money to pay you for this uh, document, but I do have potential buyers. If they are interested, they will pay me and I'll pay you. Look, Scavlin, we ran a lot of risk to get those plans. Dalek, let's do as Mr. Scavlin says. Oh, right. I don't like the setup. Mr. Scavlin's perfectly reliable, dear. Now, until he contacts me, you and I better split up. Split up? What for? We stand less chance of being caught if we're not together. Now, you go to our old place and wait for me to call you. Just a minute. Where will you be? Don't worry. I'll keep in touch. Now, you run along. Hours later, in Space Patrol headquarters at Lowell City, Carol listens to Commander Corey's account of the theft. And you know where she is? Yes. One of our agents trailed her when she left Scavlin's bookstore. But we don't know where her partner is or what they've done with the plans. Wouldn't you say the plans are in the bookshop, Commander? Well, that's likely. But to raid the bookshop now might give Scavlin a chance to tip off the ringleaders. I'm hoping Carol can help us. Well, I'll do anything I can, Buzz. I want you to go to Scavlin's and try to get some evidence. It may be risky, so I'm giving you a miniature space phone to conceal on your person. We found out that the woman's name is Zyla Kermandy. Her husband's name is Earl. Well, what do you want me to do at Scavlin's? I want you to impersonate the girl who impersonated you. Yes, ma'am. May I help you? Have you got the money? Money? You remember me. I was here the other day with my husband, Earl. Oh, yes, I remember. I ask you, have you got the money? The arrangement was that I am to contact Mr. Kermady. Yes, but Earl changed his mind. He's tired of waiting. He can sell the plans himself. He wants you to hand them over to me. Now. Why is he in such a hurry? And why didn't he come? He's afraid he's being watched. If he came here, the space patrol would get Earl and you too. 
Well, if that's the way it's got to be, just wait here a moment, Mrs. Kermody. Oh, sure. Yeah? Kermody, this is Scavlin. You better get over here right away. You got the money? No, but your wife's trying to double-cross you. Huh? She come to the shop? She's here now. I keep stalling. I'll be right over. Okay. Moments pass in the quiet, musty bookshop. Carol waits anxiously for the proprietor, Uriah Scavelin, to return. In another part of the store, she hears a series of muffled, scraping sounds, as though heavy boxes were being moved. Could it be that Scavelin really is going to remove the stolen plans from hiding and give them to her? Suddenly, the street door bursts open. Here you are here, Sila. Oh. Uh, you all fix you, you double-crossing little... Go, you I never thought you'd try to pull a trick like this. Wait. Wait a minute. Scavlin, where are you? Right here. And if you're going to beat your wife up, do it somewhere else. This isn't my wife. This isn't Zyla. It isn't? Uh, then who is it? It's the secretary general's daughter. She knows the whole setup. Space patrol must have sent her here as a spy. We've got to get rid of her. We'll hide her in the basement with, with all those old books. You mean where you've got the secret plans hidden? Yes. Get her down there, quickly. All right, come on, sister. Get going. Oh. Down the stairs. A few moments later, a space patrol surface car screams to a stop in front of the bookshop, and two men rush to the door. It's locked, Commander. I can fix that. <coughs> now, before the space phone cut off, they put Carol in a basement. Let's find the stairs. I haven't heard a sound out of that miniature space phone for several minutes. I hope we're not too late. I hear the stairs, Happy. Have your ray gun ready. Yes, sir. Hey, this place is musty. Yeah. Carol? Carol, where are you? Oh, Buzz, is that you? She's down this way, sir. Oh, Buzz, happy. And the space phone worked after all. When they threw me down the here, they, they broke it, and I was afraid you didn't hear me. Where are they now? They said something about getting a truck. We'll get you out of here, then come back and look for the plans. Yeah, before Scavelin and Kermit to get back. What's that? The door closed. Uh-oh. Looks like the boys are back. We're locked in here. Oh, Buzz. Now, don't worry, we're still all right. Captain Halcroft will realize this trouble when he doesn't hear from us. Yeah, and... The, the, hey, Commander, my head hurts. It's some terrible pressure. What's happening? It's ultrasonic vibrations. Where are they coming from? From a resonator up near the ceiling. Vibrations kill the insects that attack these old books. Yeah, well, what'll it do to us? Well, if we can't shut off that resonator, we'll meet the same fate as the insects. Buzz, I can't stand it any longer. The pain's driving me crazy. Cap, we've got to act fast. I can hardly move, and it sounds getting louder. It isn't the audible sound that's hurting us. It's the higher cycles. Now, Happy, if we can move that ladder, raise it up, crash it against the resonator. I'll try it, sir. It's heavy. Awful heavy. Commander, I can't hold it. I'll try it, Hap. It'll only reach... Commander, maybe, maybe I can climb it. Yeah, you'd lose your balance, sure. You're getting it, sir. The top of the ladder is right next to the resonator. Push it hard, sir. <sighs> you did it, sir. It's off. You broke the circuit. Yeah. Hey, Commander, Carol fainted. I know. She'll be all right. That gives me an idea. Listen. Don't hear anything in this, Gavin. Of course not. The walls are insulated. But I can guarantee there isn't anything alive in that room. One minute of those ultrasonic vibrations is all a human being can take. You've had five. I'll cut the switch. Now we'll open the door and take inventory. Of them. Well, the best thing for us to do is to get the plans and get out of here. Now, where'd you put them? Oh, right up here, in this old book. That's all we wanted to know. Scavlin, they're alive. You bet we are. Get Scavlin happy. I'll take care of Kermany. <coughs> Keep an eye on him, happy, while I take care of Carol. Oh, I'm all right, Buzz. Here, I'll help you up. Oh, thanks, Buzz. Well, happy, I thought I told you to keep an eye on our prisoners. Hmm? Oh, excuse me, sir. I was just noticing a book here. A real old one, printed way back in 1955. 1955? Well, that's a thousand years old. Commander, can I take it with me to read in the ship on the way back to Terra? It looks real interesting. Oh, what's the title? Uh, Why Man Can Never Visit Other Planets. <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. 
Space Patrollers, this is your commander. Now I want every one of you to listen carefully to this message on the reminder meter. Now listen, here goes. Send away today for your Monoview Outer Space Helmet. Get it? Now I want all of you to do just what the reminder meter says, because time is running out. This is the last time I can tell you about the sensational Monoview Outer Space Helmet, the official Space Patrol helmet that I wear on secret missions. You know, with your helmet on, your disguise is complete. The specially designed one-way eye plate lets you see out clearly, but nobody else can see in or tell who you are. Remember, too, the helmet has real-looking printed oxygen tanks and breathing tubes. Comes in mighty handy on space jaunts. And there's outer space ear plates, gleaming lightning flash hood. Yes, everything for the space patroller. Captain Tufeld, tell the space patrollers how to get one. Yes, sir, Commander. Just buy a box of good hot Ralston. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an instant or regular Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And send away today for your Monoview Outer Space Helmet. <laughs> And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are searching through an abandoned spaceship, half buried in a landslide in the mountains of Venus. Whatever forced this spaceship to land certainly wasn't the lack of fuel. Just look at all these drums bolted to the racks. Mm-hmm. They all seem to be full. Commander, the ship's moving. The dirt's getting away. We're sliding down the slope. Drums are breaking loose. Run for the next compartment. If one of the drums hits us, we'll be crushed. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Treasure of Mount Roll Cab, when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Mike Devery. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufeld speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! This is Dick Tufeld in St. Louis reporting on the twin jet Air Force fighter, the McDonnell Voodoo XF-88A. In a moment, we'll hear from the noted test pilot who flies this plane, Phil Houghton. Speed of the Voodoo is a military secret, but it's plenty fast. Wingspan is 40 feet, length 55. Weight 10 tons. And now, Phil Houghton recorded this morning at Lambert Airfield. After seeing the Voodoo, I guess you know why I like my job. There's one thing about it, though. A test pilot has to stay in good condition, get lots of sleep, and eat good, healthy food. That's why I like rice checks and wheat checks for breakfast. They've got plenty of energy in them, and they really taste swell. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated, bite-sized form. So do as Phil Houghton, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., and other top test pilots do. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local newspaper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces.